Heavy Metal Magazine, Volume 1, Issue Number 3, June of 1977. Today we're going to look at Heavy Metal Magazine, Volume 1, Issue Number 3, June of 1977. We start off with a great cover by Mobius. Now, this Mobius cover was also used in issue number four of Metal Herlon. They have the AccuTrack 4000, AccuTrack, the turntable with eyes. Odd thing there, it's kind of scary. Not every man can handle Metaxa. And some letters to the editor right here. No, it's, it's kind of funny. Dear Heavy Metal, Arzak is fantastic. How long does it take to draw that strip? It's so detailed that one marvels at the sweat that must go into producing it. And the answer is, when queried on this, artist Mobius, lolling in his cabana on the French Riviera, said that an average panel of Arzak takes about two days for him to produce. That's one panel. Now we move on to the contents page here, a nice panel by Mobius on top here. Contents. We start off with Gale by Droulet. A World Apart by Davis, then Conquering Armies by Dionne and Gaul, Vessel by He, Sunpot by Baudet, Rock Blitz by Macedo, Den, of course, by Corbin, Night Images by Robert E. Howard. Now, this is very interesting here. We'll get to that. Sloan by Tardy, Age of Ages by Rubington, 1996 by Montaigne, Harzak by Mobius, Vengeance by Alexis, Shells, a classic, and one of my favorite shooting stories in both, in either Metal Herlant or Heavy Metal. A little bit of an opener, uh, is this is the third issue. Still, Robert E. Howard, creator of Conan the Barbarian, lived for a while in the world we imagine, then returned to the Hyperborean Age. By the traces he left behind, we know he was no dream. Among those traces were poems and verse visions of possible places and impossible emotions, which have been collected in a forthcoming book called Night Images. Enclosed, please find Heavy Metal number 3, which features six pages from that book, with illustrations by the incomparable Richard Corbin, author-illustrator of Den. Heavy metal is not so much a way of life as a magazine. There are those who wish to know whether or not this is some kind of joke. We wish them well in their philosophical pursuits. When they are done with heavy metal, they can start in on life. Gale by Droulet. Now look at that fabulous stuff. Granted, it is in black and white. It is great sometimes, though, to see Droulet's amazing work in the black and white so we can dig in to the fine pen and ink work. If you guys have done, if you've worked in pen and ink, you've done a few pages, maybe many pages, you know, some splash pages, and you look at this, you know how much goes into one of these pages. I have seen this particular piece in color as well, and this one. So here we go, explaining the, the story, the background. Just another astounding two-page spread by Droulet for Gale. The guy really does love to do full one-page and two-page spreads. There's no doubt about it. He does so many of them, and they're fantastic. An advertisement for PV, PV Electronics Corporation, Meridian, Mississippi, folks. And now we go to E.E. E. Davis's World Apart. Some nice color there. Dione and Gal with Conquering Armies. It's just, it continues amazing art and uh, what a story. This thing is just, you know, goes on for many issues. In this little segment here, he's talking, we're looking at a beetle on the ground. And he says, I was a sentry. He picks up the beetle in the 4th Army. We had come a long ways taking the legs off the beetle. 
and he proceeds to eat it. And they run out of food. It was then that the commander decided to leave the sentries behind to watch the road. The road? What road? In truth, we were so many mouths less to feed. Some desperate fellows survived for a while by their wits before dying of hunger. And one day, it was my turn on duty. Picks up another beetle. That was when I saw the ones who were following us. They attacked in the night, and I could hear the noise of battle. Certainly I could have prevented it. But he needn't have chosen me, the bastard. So he stayed back while all of the people, all the soldiers he was with, were slaughtered. Though we continue with The Vessel by Hay, I believe it's Dominique Hay, the artist and writer. Black and white. And we have, of course, Von Baudet's Sun Pot Chapter 4. <laughs> I just love it. It's so funny. Of course, it's just, you know, the whole weed drug culture, marijuana culture, whatever you want to call it, throughout Bon Baudet's art. And you have Belinda Bump there, you know, the various characters. Yeah, a little card here, free National Lampoon 1964 high school yearbook parody with every subscription. Uh, so they're comparing themselves to U.S. News and World Report. Hilarious. Big boffs, yes. No. <laughs> Madcap antics, yes. No. Mirth, yes. No. No articles on balance of trade payments, no. Yes. <laughs> I'd be sporting a cheat wizard t-shirt. Are you kidding? Dirty duck. Holy crap, yeah, I'd, I'd probably pick that up in a second. Flash your favorite National Lampoon comic characters with these full-color t-shirts and tank tops. Uh, here we are with Macedo and Rock Blitz. <laughs> this is totally, totally bizarre. I think I've covered this in an issue of Metal Herlant. We have this biker guy, you know, and he's like, holy fucking shit, a peace creep on our turf. And he's seeing this guy here. So he goes up and attacks the guy Hits him with a bottle, knocks the fake wig and face off the guy's head, and it turns out to be an alien. And the alien is implanting shit in the biker's mind. And he's like, what the fuck, my head, Christ, I'm flipping. You know, he goes home, his girlfriend is hot, ready, and naked on the beanbag. And this guy is just... Having none of it, he's like, no time, chick, suit up pronto. We're going to see the gang. Come on, move it. Hey, you look really weird. What's the score? <laughs> I love it. I love it. So there they go. They go to the rock blitz. Enter the zone of Richard Corbin's den. Just check out that color on that, folks. You know, I mean, obviously, it's more vibrant after looking at a black and white strip. But good Lord. Richard Corbin just is one of the greatest colorists I have ever seen in my life. There's no doubt about it. So this is the third installment of Den. And I just, God, the purples and so forth are just amazing. So, of course, they're performing a sacrifice. They throw a body in the water. And Den is watching all this happen. And uh, he's like, stop, stop. You know, and here come the guards. He leaps into action. You know, as an artist, he's phenomenal. This, the color is just stunning. Night Images, a book of fantasy verse by Robert E. Howard. Illustrated by Richard Corbin and Frank Frazetta. This is a preview of Night Images, the new deluxe collector's edition published by Morningstar Press. Check out these. There's verse by Robert E. Howard. The stunning painting by Richard Corbin. It is black and white, but still, man, that is just absolutely fantastic. 
another verse, A Word from the Outer Dark by Robert E. Howard, and yet another great illustration by Richard Corbin. One more verse by Robert E. Howard. Then we get into Tardy's Fear of the Blue-Eyed Sloan. Love his colors on this. You know, Tardy is, is pretty funny. He's definitely an offbeat artist. But I really enjoy his stuff. He's just an interesting artist, the way that he does his, draws his characters. Age of Ages, A Gothic Science Fiction Trip to the Apocalypse by Akbar Del Piombo, Collages by Norman Rubington. So here's an ad for Mandre, The Masked Marauder is Among Us. And here we go, Montier, 1996. And we come to Mobius's Arzak. See, just a beauteous 1930s roadster. Going through the desert here, and he's going up to a temple or some kind of monument or ruins. I just check out the way he does this. Very interesting because, you know, as I, you would be tempted, conventionally speaking, you would be tempted to do a flip so you see the you know driver coming towards you on one of these frames, but he keeps it all. The driver. You know, the car is going away from us, going towards the temple, close up. And then he's out of the vehicle, and he's going up to the temple door. Goes through, and uh, we see the setup where there's a bunch of people inside, milling about in this strange multicolored structure. Some people are naked in there, or most of them, I guess. And so the guy's walking through. And one of these guys just comes up and just kicks him right in the back. He's on his knees and close up here. He's definitely gotten smacked hard. So he goes into the structure. As we see here, he opens the door, goes inside, opens up a box. And then we see a separate panel of Arzak and his bird, who is on its back, possibly dead. We go back inside. The guy's working on something. And uh, suddenly the bird comes to life. So he's work he was actually tuning up his bird, apparently. So he watches as Arzak flies off on his repaired bird, I guess. And he drives off. Here's this great, great artist, Alexis, who took his life very early, unfortunately. Shells by Schutten. One of my favorite stories by Schutten. You see insects, they get together here, and they're humping, right? So they're humping. Suddenly a big foot comes down and smashes them. Humanoids in metal, like, you know, some kind of metal armor. And they're playing around, and she's like, catch me if you can. So they go through all this, the ruins of this whatever junkyard. They're speaking, and he says, this damn machine turns me off. We can't go on like this. I'm sure it's possible to do it the way people used to. Right, and they're talking about the, you know, the way it used to be. So the guy starts taking off his armor. And we can see it's really great because it's black and white. But then it gets down to color when he starts taking the pieces of his shell off. And we see his fingers here. The eye coverings revealing his eyes. And bit by bit they start taking off their shells. And they get totally naked, and they they get busy with it, right? And they're they're doing the deed. Suddenly, all of these insects show up, <laughs> and they're like, "What the fuck?" Just tons of flying, stinging insects, ants, bees, you name it, beetles. They're biting, stinging everything, and they basically consume these people. And at the end, it's two insects humping on the remains of the shell of those humans. Here is an ad. I used to have this back in the day, back in the 80s. I had this book, Ariel, the Book of Fantasy. You had people like Ray Bradbury, Richard Corbin, Harlan Ellison, Frank Frazetta, Ursula K. Le Guin, Michael Moorcock, J.R.R. Tolkien in this book. Of course, the 
amazing Frazetta cover with just stunning, stunning art. And on the back cover, we have a great full-color Joule illustration here. So, to recap, this issue, Robert E. Howard, Richard Corbin, Vaughn Baudet, Mobius, Ed Davis, Macedo, Joule, but of course, Jean-Claude Gall, who they don't mention here, Schutten, also, Alexis, just a fantastic issue number three of Heavy Metal Magazine, June of 1977. Thanks for watching.